Hello and welcome to Mike's Arts and Crafts. I'm Libby Hoffmeister and today I'll be sharing seven time-saving tips so you can create immediately. So I'm going to share um, some prepping ideas for all of your craft stuff so that you can immediately come in to the craft room and get creating right away. Um, so to start, I'm going to show you this little bin here. Um, this bin, I keep like card panels and my cardboard um, dimensional pieces. I also keep some watercolor cardstock and some card bases. Um, and so my number one tip is to cut your card bases and panels ahead of time. So here uh, you can see I have a pretty good um, stash here, but I'm going to cut a few more card bases um, so you can see and just to make sure my stash is really, really um, uh, full so that um, when this busy school season comes, I am uh, I can immediately come into the craft room and get creating. So here I have some thick um, cardstock. I think it's either 100 or 110 pound cardstock. I get this from Hobby Lobby because I find it cheapest on sale there um, out of any that I can find. And it's um, pretty nice cardstock, um, especially for card bases. And then I'm cutting a few light gray cardstock cardstock pieces. Um, I'm cutting at five and a half and scoring at four and a quarter to make side folding card bases. You could do it the opposite for top folding if you'd like. Um, but yeah, I'm just um, restocking some of my most commonly used card bases. Um, it's pretty good, so um, I didn't do a ton here. But if I were to do a bunch, um, I would probably do between 50 and 100 card bases so that you have a really, really full stash and you don't have to do this for several months. Um, so here I will just finish off scoring all of those card bases at four and a quarter. Um, using my scoreboard and um, I will just put them back into my little acrylic container um, so that they are at easy access um, for me to use um, when I'm creating. Um, I don't, I can just, um, when I'm creating I can just reach over and pull out a card base that I need or whatever and it's all right there. Um, so the next thing I'm doing here is I have a watercolor paper pad and I'm just going to cut this, this paper in a in half um, so I can just have a bunch of sheets of them um, and I cut quite a few of these I don't use um, watercolor cardstock a ton so um, I only cut um, a few but I will have enough um, for me to create a lot with them so yeah um, and then I will add that to a watercolor section of my um, acrylic container here and yeah that will pretty much finish that one off um, and then I had some um, nice thick 100 pound, 110 pound cardstock scraps, and so I thought I'd cut them down and see if I can make any card bases with them. So I, or not card bases, but um, card panels with them. So these are four and a quarter by five and a half card panels. This is really the only size I reach for, and I will do whatever I need to on it, and then um, I will just cut it down to the size I need. I find that's easier for me, but I do have a few. Um, panels in some other sizes if I need. Um, and then the rest I will show you what I will, the rest of this scrap cardstock, I'll show you what I'll do with it in just a minute. The larger pieces I do save in my little drawer with the rest of my white cardstock, so it's really easy for me to um, come and use um, cardstock, especially if I need a bigger piece. Um, so here, um, this is um, a large bin, and here I keep all of my thin cardboard, so I'll just store all of my thin cardboard in here, and then when um, it comes time for me to cut it all down, I can grab it from here, so I um, tend to um, collect a lot of it, which leads me into um, tip number two, which is to prep your cardboard panels. Um, I like to use these for dimension on my cards, um, especially when I'm popping up panels. I find this is a very um, inexpensive way to get dimensions, dimension on your card, and it also is um, using um, just some recycled scraps that you have around um, your house. So I just save them in this little bin, and then I create just a ton here. You'll see how many I create today. It's um, a a lot. I used all of the cardboard in that bin today for either cardboard panels or you'll see something a little bit later today um, that I also used for it. Um, but yeah, here I am just cu cutting them down. It definitely does not have to be perfect. There can be gaps in the panel um, and uh, it's not a big deal. I will typically sa sandwich the um, bits with like some 
uh, that's not like a full panel and I'll just sandwich it between two fuller panels um, but I don't find it's a big deal especially since it will be hidden so here you can see a time lapse time lapse of me cutting all of these panels down um, I will typically trim um, with my scissors to cut the panel down so that it fits in my trimmer and then I can really easily trim them out and I create um, a bunch of different sizes and I just have a little sticky note which with each of the size that I want um, to cut panels panels from and then I can just stack them next to that size and um, when I'm creating or when I'm cutting these panels I can just look over and go okay that's the size and I can easily cut them that way. I will also add stars to which are my most used panels um, so I had added two stars to my most used panels and then one star to my other most used panels and then um, some lesser used panels I didn't put anything on them so that I could easily see how many I needed of each so you can see I can I ha kind of have varying heights of cardstock for each of these sizes and then here I am just stacking them up with some liquid glue I have also times lapse time lapsed this sorry um, and I stack about three panels now um, I used to do two but I kind of like more dimension so I will stack three together so I don't even have to worry about stacking them when it comes time to use them and it's really really easy to um, use them when I need to um, so yeah I really really like doing this this did take me probably several hours to do but I think it was totally worth it in the end um, so number three is to create stations. So here I have this little cart. This is my die cutting cart. And you can see, I will come back to the top and show you that piece a little bit later. But the second one kind of has some cardstock scraps. So here in this little container, I have some foil cardstock scraps, as well as some vellum and also some glitter cardstock. And I keep that up there. Um, I also have a little bin full of all of my background like scraps and pieces that would be really great to die cut out of. Um, since this is my die cutting cart, I like to keep um, little scraps that I can easily die cut from in there. Um, so yeah, and then I also have um, a little bin with some black and white cardstock that I can die cut from and this one does need to be filled up so I will bring that up and I will fill it up with you um, here in just a moment um, and then I, here in this last little bin. I also have some thin cardboard. Um, I keep all of my white cardboard separate. I use the um, like light brown cardboard um, for my panels and then I'll use the white for my die cuts because um, I like the white look um, on my stack die cuts but it doesn't really matter for panels because um, I typically use a size down so you can't see it anyway. And then on this bottom shelf here, I keep some of the projects I'm working on that, in, um, that include die cutting, so yeah. And then here, also on the middle shelf, I keep this little caddy um, with all of my die cutting stuff and my, all my layering stuff. And this is really, really nice for when I want to do die cutting on the go or I want to bring it upstairs or something. I can e really easily do that. And then here I have a whole... Um, stack a uh, whole thing of stacked containers that I can keep die cuts in while I'm die cutting as well as my mini die cutting machine so this is a whole die cutting station then here at the top I have a little um, like tabletop that fits onto this cart and I keep my die cutting machine on top of it I'm hoping to get an electric die, die cutting machine that will sit there eventually but I don't have one right now so this is working just fine and then I keep some other die cutting essentials like some projects I'm working on some press and seal and some of my plates also sit in there so yeah here I'm just going to fill um, some of them up uh, some of these containers up with some of the cardstock I have so here I um, will fill it up with some more black and also white cardstock and then I also have my thicker cardstock from earlier that I will add some of that into um, some of those smaller pieces and then here is all my white cardboard and I will just cut all of this down to more mana manageable sizes that will fit in this container and also in my die cutting machine so and then I will just fill up this container this container is very full currently and I will have a lot to die cut from so yeah I just cut all of that using my scissors and this will make it super super easy um, especially when I get busy the um, school season is a very very busy time for me and I typically um, only have one or two days to um, craft um, the rest seem to be pretty full so um, I want to make sure that I have um, all the things ready so I don't have to waste time on things like this. So number four is to prep your sentiments. So some of the sentiments you can prep like some die cutting die cut sentiments um, you can kind of pre 
um, die cut them and layer them. So here you can see me um, uh, layering up some of the die cuts that I have. And um, these ones um, are from the um, Alta New Sweet Sentiments die, uh, Sweet Sentiments um, die cut set. Um, and this is my absolute favorite um, sentiment set. I think it's so pretty and absolutely beautiful. So um, I've I have created a lot of these. You can see my container there, and I haven't finished yet, so um, I'm creating a bunch of uh, sentiments that I can easily add to my cards. And then you can also either stamp or foil your sentiments. Here I have a bunch of foiled little sentiment strips. This is also another favorite sentiment um, set of mine. This is the um, Spellbinders Mini Everyday Sentiments, and I will just cut them out with a sentiment strip. You can see I have a bunch to cut out, and then I will just add I will just add them to this little container and I can grab what I need um, when I need it. Um, and so this is really nice to have because the sentiments are, 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 are already ready for you so you have you can take less of the work out. Um, some cards you will still have to do sentiments for, um, but I think this is um, sometimes some of the less fun part about creating. So I think getting it done ahead of time is a really, really great option as well. So number five is to restock or refill your supplies. So here I am starting by taking some like aluminum foil and I'm just using my scissors and I'm cutting through the aluminum foil. Um, this will sharpen up all of my scissors and all of my supplies. So you can see me um, cutting uh, the foil there with a bunch of scissors and this um, will just sharpen your scissors. I don't think this is a necessary one but this is just something that I thought of. Um, also I don't have any more black cardstock. I noted that when I was filming this video so um, you can go buy more of your black cardstock or whatever um, you are missing in your um, supply in your supplies. I also need to buy some more liquid glue so I will know that and I can restock that so I don't have to worry about it later when I get really busy. Um, here I'm just um, also doing this with my little paper trimmer. Um, I don't think this one really needs it. This is pretty much self-sharpening but while I was at it I decided why not. So here I'm cutting more of that foil and then I will just throw the rest of that away um, or recycle it um, and um, it's not a big deal. So here I am also going to fill up my glue bottles um, here. Um, I like to keep my glue bottles in little like fine tip containers that I get at the craft store for really, really cheap. You can get a bunch of them for um, pretty cheap. And then I just fill them with my Barely Arts um, liquid glue in them and they work really, really well for everything I need. And I really love the Barely Arts liquid glue in these little mini containers. Um, they're really, really nice that way. And yeah, that's, um, so I'll fill up my glue, um, make sure I, um, all my card stocks stocked, things like that. Um, make sure, making sure that you have everything ready um, to go when you're creating. You can um, re-ink your ink pads, things like that. Um, I also filled up my like cleaning little bottle and also my spray, um, like my water bottle. Um, spritzer thing. Um, so just those kind of things um, around your craft room. Um, this is a really nice time to do that so that you can immediately get in your craft room and create. Um, and then number six is to start your cleaning or organization habits. So here, um, maybe after every um, every craft session you want to wipe down your craft tables. Um, starting those habits before the busy season kids kicks in can help you um, to really um, uh, create when you want to create and not worry about things like cleaning and organization. Making sure that everything, every tool in your craft room has a home um, is a really, really great place to start um, so that you can come into your craft room and immediately start creating because you know where everything is and you can easily find it and have access to it. So um, I think this is um, a really great op um, opportunity to really get those habits in place so that um, it's not a big deal when the time comes. Um, so yeah, I think this is a really, really great option. Here I'm just cleaning my counters um, so that I can start that habit because I definitely want to do that after every um, session that I create. So you can see me doing that here. Um, and then I'm just wiping down my countertops to just um, clean them all off, make sure they're ready to go for my next crafting, crafting session, and I can really um, just get in the craft room and craft immediately when I come in next time. So yeah, 
And then here, um, the last tip is, um, my seventh tip is to create your project bins. So you can either buy these or um, whatever. Um, these are 12 by 12 like scrapbook containers and they store um, like paper really, really nicely. Um, they store all of your tools or different pieces for your projects really nicely. And I think these are really, really great options so that you can come into your craft room, grab your project bin and immediately start creating. Um, I think these are a really great option. And yeah, that will finish this video off for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and come back next week for a new video. If you are interested in any of the supplies I used today, check the description box below. For more inspiration, please consider liking and subscribing. And for even more inspiration, check out my Instagram and Pinterest accounts at my starts and crafts. Thank you so much again. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.